Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike, and in this video, I'm gonna be teaching you how to add a custom cursor in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So you see here, we have this kind of default little pointer cursor. What we're gonna be able to do is change that to essentially whatever you want, either an HTML element, an emoji, or eventually an image. So why don't we go and get started, and I will show you how this works. So we're actually gonna be using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript here. And the first thing we'll do is let's just create a div and I just want to show you how this works. So we're going to create a div and I'm going to give this a class and it's going to be called cursor. So with this cursor class, we can come down here in CSS and let's style it. So for just to start off, we're going to do like a very basic cursor. It's just going to be kind of a square. So we'll set this width equal to two EMs, height equal to two EMs. And then why don't we give it a background of blue? So that should go ahead and show up there on the browser. And what we want it to do is to follow the existing cursor around. So whenever I move the mouse, I want this little square to follow the mouse around. And to do that, we're going to have to go into JavaScript. So the first thing we need to do in JavaScript is get access to this div right here. And we're just going to do that. We're going to create a variable here called cursor and we're going to set it equal to document dot query selector. So we're going to select something and we're just going to select that cursor so I can use the class name just like this in query selector. So now we have the cursor and once we have the cursor, then we want to get it to follow the mouse around. So the way we can do that is by listening for a click event. So we could say document or sorry, not a click event, a mouse move event. So we could say document dot add event listener. And the event that we want to listen for is mouse move. So the mouse move event, we can pass this a little function. And whenever the mouse moves, we can kind of do something, right? So what do we want to do? Well, we want to change the position of the cursor. So in other words, we want to change the cursor like this uh, little blue square so that it's following the mouse. So this event is going to take an event object that's going to get passed to us. And this event object is going to have two properties on it, client X and client Y. And that's going to tell us exactly where the mouse is on the screen. So what we can do is once we know where the mouse is on the screen, we can just adjust the styling of the cursor to change it. So in order to change the position of the cursor, first thing we need to do is change its position to absolute. That means that we'll be able to move it wherever we want. And then we can change the top and the left. So if I said left was like, let's say 100 pixels, and I said top was 300 pixels, that'll move that little rectangle down. So I can move it anywhere I want. We could do 10 to the left. We could do 30 to the top, right? I can move this around because it's absolute positioning with the left and the top. So what we'll do is down here in the handler in this click or in this mouse move handler, we'll do that. So we'll say cursor dot style dot left. And we're going to set this equal to how many pixels we want this to be where the mouse is basically. And what that is, is going to be event dot client X. So event dot client X will tell us where the mouse is on the screen. And then cursor dot style dot top, we can use event dot client Y. And what we need to do then is just make sure these are pixels. And then if we save this now, whenever I move the mouse, it should be following the cursor just like that you can see that it's actually following us around now one thing we might want to do is you'll see that this little square is kind of to the bottom and to the left like we're in the top left corner we probably want the mouse cursor to be right in the middle so another thing that we can do is we can get the uh, we can figure out like how wide and how tall this little cursor div is and then we can subtract that from here so I'm going to use um, some destructuring here and we can say that we want to get the width and the height of that cursor. So we could say cursor dot get bounding client rect. And this is going to give us an object that has essentially like how wide and how tall the cursor rectangle is. And then as well, you could get X and Y. So we're going to get these. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract them. So I'm going to say uh, event dot client X minus and we'll say the width of the rectangle divided by two, because that's gonna move it to the center. And then we can do the same thing for the Y. So we could say minus the height of the rectangle divided by two. So now we should have this thing following us and you can see that the mouse cursor is right there in the middle. 
So if you wanted, you can style this cursor however you want. Like we could give this a border radius of 100% and now it's gonna be like a circle. So that might be a little bit more visually appealing. But whatever you can do in CSS, you can basically do with this thing right here. Another thing we might wanna do though is create an image for this. So I have a couple of images pulled up here. I just typed in like a uh, custom cursor, pings, no background. And this one's kind of cool. It's like this glowing cursor. So you can see here, it doesn't have a background to it. And that's what you're gonna need is one that doesn't have a background. So I'm gonna copy the image address from this. Now you can get your own image, like you could create an image like this, but there's also like a lot of cool custom ones. So then instead of using a div here, we're actually gonna turn this into an image tag. And then we can get rid of this. And then we're gonna give this a source. So that's just gonna be that source that I copied. So now instead of having this little uh, square, we just have that and we can go ahead and get rid of the background as well. And I think we can get rid of the border radius too. But otherwise everything can stay the same. And now we have this custom cursor that's gonna follow us around. Uh, you will notice though that the existing cursor is still there. So the last thing we'll do here is, uh, and I'm actually gonna put this on the body. So we can say here, um, and I'm putting it on the body just so it's always, we always kind of get rid of it, but a uh, cursor is going to be none. So now the default cursor will disappear and we're just left with the custom one that we created. So that's basically how it works. You can either do an image or you can do anything in CSS, but this JavaScript down here will give you everything you need so that this custom cursor is in place. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe and leave a like, and otherwise I'll see you in the next one.